Well, that's something. So I made it home, no events, no surprises. Had a heck of a time getting this thing pulled up because the back tires were locked. You see all the amount of dirt there. I think it must have sat in a low spot. Pretty common that those brakes will seize. That inside of that drum surface is bare and so it'll rust pretty quick. There's not a lot of clearance between the shoes. So that gets them right away where they will rust solid and not turn. First thing I try, you can see I've got the three jaw gear puller set up. So I turn that and see if I can get it to pop. Any of these GMs with the 7 16 studs like this, like your 50s, 60s Chevy Impalas, they really don't like to come without having to heat them or just really mess the drum up because they fit so tight around those studs. And the way the brake shoes hold them, you just really run into problems with keeping it straight and keeping it where you don't end up having something Tighten up with the puller a little bit, and it's seized from rust around the nose of that axle shaft. So I'm going to take the torch, heat that up, and get that drum to expand and hopefully pop off from around the axle shaft. Dear Mr. Good Pliers, a lighter is not a torch striker. Once you can see the end of it's cleared that axle shaft, it's ready to twist the rest of the way off with the puller. Good pliers. A crescent wrench is not a pry bar. So there's the brake shoes all rusted in there with the dirt. Usually just take a pry bar, pry them out of there. If they're real tough like this, then I'll just take the torch and you can cut through that adjuster and then they'll come out, which in this case is probably what I'm gonna end up doing. Take a look out here in my outdoor parts department. Tires upon tires upon tires. So I hunted around out in the yard, found a few tires that I think will work for rollers. This one's a Super Glacier Grip. A tire like that can only make you think of one thing, and that is Cold War Motors, my classic tire. 
that's the type of tire you'd probably want to ride around on in Alberta. Big shout out to Dean and the guys and Scott and all the agents. All right, so the front brake drum was a little tight. I'm gonna pull it off. Oh, that's a problem. Ball joint's pretty shot on the top. I got it rolled off the trailer. Took a little bit to free up the brakes. I'm gonna pull it in the yard, see if it runs. Unfortunately, I violated one of my own rules when I bought this truck, and I bought one that did not have working door latches. It's my biggest pet peeve. It's lucky to even be able to get this door open. I sat in there and kicked it, and I think it was only because it popped over the latch because the little wheel in there does not turn at all. So these doors, nothing works. Everything inside of them is junk. The latches are junk, the regulators are junk. The lock mechanisms are junk. I violated one of my own rules, so that's what I got myself into. And I gotta find a way to be able to fix these doors, figure it out. That's what every, every mechanic guy has to do, is figure it out. GM makes it extra deliberately complicated because these screws are machine thread. They could have put a regular screw thread in there, but now let's give it a bolt thread so it'll season. They're real nice. And then you got to destroy screwdrivers, you got to destroy tools, destroy the door panel, unless you're thinking. So in my case, I may just be drilling those out and then putting a J nut in place of there like the factory should have done in the first place. It's got the Tasmanian Devil floor mat, another thing that proves it was parked in 2002. So we're gonna pull it in the yard and see what we can do about getting this old heap running. Have a quick peek under the hood here. She does have antifreeze down in there. That's a good sign. Oil's full and contaminated, but it's there. Automatic transmission fluid. Yep, we got fluid. So that's a good sign. Got the motor mount chained up there. Hood's got these anti-rattle strips. Full of OE spec parts. Exhaust's been leaking. It's all big pile of braze there on the end of the manifold. Guess they didn't quite get her. Does turn over with the fan, so that's a good sign for me. Battery cables, not so good. I want to get some replacements for those. Always better when the air cleaner tops are on them. That keeps the carbs from getting completely full of dirt and junk. Linkages move. It's all a good sign. <laughs> Get some good battery cables on it and see what it's going to do. So I started to cut back the battery cables, but you can see that corrosion is tracked all the way up inside there. So I'm gonna get rid of this. Fortunately, looked around in the yard and found 
these old cables laying out there so that's the first step good battery cables okay so battery cables weren't quite long enough so I had to move the battery closer to reach them professionally secured it down more OEM spec parts have begat more OEM spec parts next step is to engage the starter I don't get in the habit of using any of the existing factory harness because I don't know anything about it and most of the time these vehicles don't come with the keys when I get them the ones that do sometimes the dash harness I've had dash harnesses completely not work at all so to just get in the habit of doing everything from under the hood see there's two terminals there that one closest to the engine block the real little one is the starter terminal that's marked with an S that's the one you want to jump the one on the other side is the ignition terminal I just learned by watching a video from fuel injection sucks channel that that ignition lead is to give more voltage to the points for better ignition on startup. It just gives a brief burst while it's cranking. Otherwise, if you had that sustained, it would burn the points out. So I appreciate that little tip from watching another video. So here we go. We get our starter jumped with the screwdriver. Okay, so our engine turns over. So we know our starting circuit is working. Once I do know that the starting circuit works with the screwdriver, then I'll take a long lead of wire and run that up to the battery so that I can control that from up top and not have to reach down. here at the parts department need a piece of wire ta-da need to get my ignition lead back from the 61 Falcon that was my last bullet run if you guys are new here check out other videos on my channel you can see how that one turned out all right so I've got my starter solenoid wire hooked up it's ready to go before you crank on one of these very much you're gonna want to disconnect that fuel line there coming into the pump so you're not sucking gas out of the tank that's gonna be old rotten nasty stale stuff that'll stick your valves so I'm gonna grab my good pliers break that line loose Not much spring left in that spring clamp. It's broke enough, it'll just suck air if it sucks anything. Next step, check out the ignition. I've undone the screws on the cap. You can see that it's a little bit burned up in the top on each contact point but looks like it should still work pop your rotor bug looks okay I'll hit that with the steel wool clean it up every one of these old vehicles it's been sitting is gonna have a scum on the surface of the points so you gotta get that cleaned off hold them open with a screwdriver Just take an edge of something. I'm going to use this razor blade. And just kind of scrape that scum off there. If that scum is on that set of points, they will not spark. Next step, you're going to want to degrease your coil a little bit. Find out which is the hot side which is the ground side
hot side to the oh boy more LEM spec parts somebody's got a little interrupter switch or some kind of hokey something going on here so it's going down to the distributor that is the ground side this is obviously the hot side because it comes into the main harness which I'm not using uh, so we've got this switch interrupting the ground be able to tell here in a minute whether it's switched on or switched off Clean around on those. Next step, I take the alligator clip and I'm going to clip it to the hot, which I can use this auxiliary power wire for that. Clip him on. Run this over to the hot. It does spark just a little, which it should when the points are closed. It tells me I have continuity. If the points were clean, the coil would be saturating. So you just take that screwdriver and just kind of hit that. You can kind of bait that, bait that spark a little bit with the screwdriver. I don't really like these; they're not not very good. They kind of look worn, and I can see a every so often an arc on that. And there's a little bit of spark there. Make sure my leads are scratched down onto good bare metal. Uh, sometimes they spark, sometimes they don't. I got them working pretty good. So unclip that. If you leave that clipped in, coil keeps saturating and it will burn it out. Just like leaving your key on. Put your rotor bug back down. Put your cap back down. Hold this one off to see the inside. It is clean. Next step is to verify spark. So I've got the spark plug, connect up the hot lead to the coil. Ground that spark plug and then turn that engine over a couple revolutions. is sparking so that tells us systems should be in good shape and working you want to get good hot spark at those plugs so probably a good idea to take them out and clean them
Plugs aren't too bad. Just take the edge of a razor blade on the side, chip any of that little black off. I got criticized for that in my last <laughs> bullet run of the Falcon. Ah, you can't just clean a spark plug with steel wool. So I gotta show all the steps, even the razor blade part. That, hit it with the steel wool. Reconditioned by Mr. Good Pliers. Put your clean plugs back in. And your next step is to grab some gas and light her up, see if she sparks and runs. When you got your spark plugs out, you kind of want to read them as you're cleaning them. And what that means is, look at what those deposits are. It could be anything from kind of thick black scummy oil deposits. They could be white, clean. Pretty obvious. White or clean plugs mean you might have a blown head gasket. Normal deposits are tan, just the residue from burned fuel, probably. If they're just sooty, then that means it's probably been running rich. All right, this is day two. Some of you guys that watched my last wallet run of the Ford Falcon had commented, hey, you gotta hold that throttle open while you're cranking. So down here I've stuck my good pliers in between the linkage and the intake to kind of hold that open a bit. So we're gonna give it another try. Carburetor cleaner, not starting fluid. I've been told that starting fluid explodes rather than burns, so it's not really the best to use. something it runs Pop back through the carve a little there. Don't know if there could be maybe a burned valve or something. I know it runs. I know enough of the cylinders are in good enough shape to make it run okay. Next thing that I would do is probably check compression to check the condition of those valves. And then from there, do your, probably a better set of plugs and maybe a carb kit, just things where you could get it to where it would start and run and idle, and then check the function of your transmission. Fluid looks clean, doesn't smell burned, so I think that's got some promise. 
So for a well it run, for me, for today anyway, that's about as far as I'm going to go. Just want to check that that engine is in good enough shape to go on and pull it in the shop and work on it further. If you like seeing this, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Check out my other videos. I've got one on there of a will it run on a Ford Falcon. My previous video shows the auction where we picked up this truck, so check that one out. A lot of old cars, junkyards, abandoned places. Got a lot more coming. Spring is here. Yes! I filmed around a bunch of junkyards, got some good footage of that coming. And you'll want to make sure you subscribe to the channel to see what I got for you. Thanks for stopping by Mr. Good Pliers. Ambient noise for this video has been brought to you by the Union Pacific Railroad and this Norfolk Southern Railway locomotive, which has been idling on the side track for the better part of a week now. Turning all those dead dinosaurs into ambient noise. I'm sure they would love that for their legacy. I know I needed somebody else to be my camera guy. Are you okay? <laughs> Ready? Ready.